Welcome to the American Academy of Grief Counseling's videogram on neural transmitters and mental health. And neural transmitters play a key role in an individual's mental health. We look at mental health issues from a variety of prisms in life through uh, nature versus nurture, through cognitive behavioral therapies, through past traumas. And we try to analyze what causes a particular mental pathology. Sometimes, though, it's completely biological. And this is the case when mental health issues arise due to issues within the neural transmitters themselves. So neural transmitters are chemical messengers that transmit between neurons. They jump between the synaptic gap that exists between the axion and the dendrite of two neurons, the receiving and the giving ends of them. Now, there are over 100 different types of neural transmitters that exist. Some are excitatory in that they excite the neuron to fire a message to another neuron, or they can be inhibitory in that they block a particular message. The ones that we're most concerned about deal with mood and mental processes today. Uh, these types of neural transmitters are found in the monomine family, and others are also included within the amino acid families that deal with the nervous system itself. Regardless, the neural transmitters functioning is very important in mental health, especially when we're dealing with depression or if we are dealing with anxiety. Imbalances in those levels can occur when neurons are not properly absorbing, producing, or if they become damaged in themselves. So if you're depressed or anxious without a particular loss associated with the situation, many times it's an issue within the neural transmitters themselves. So we have one type known as serotonin, and this is an inhibitory transmitter that has a large effect on our moods. When serotonin is imbalanced, we can see depression exist within individuals, whether it's depression, seasonal depressive disorder, anxiety, or chronic, chronic pain, lack of serotonin or an imbalance of serotonin being too high or too low can play a role in one's behavior. Dopamine is another type of neural transmitter that deals with the feelings of reward and pleasure associated with particular acts. It also helps with focus, concentration, mood, sleep, and motivation itself. When it becomes imbalanced, we can see bipolar situations, ADHD, or even cases of schizophrenia. Endorphins are another type of neural transmitter and they're closely related with reward as well. They are linked to those types of opiate type feelings that are automatically created within our body when we do something more pleasurably, usually exercise or also of other uh, types of activities that are of a sexual nature. Uh, in addition to that are glutamate and GABA. Uh, glutamate is an excitatory neural transmitter. It plays a key role in the cognitive processes and too much of it can lead to anxiety and it can also inflame OCD itself. It can lead to also cognitive decline in dementia. Now GABA can balance out glutamate and it is an inhibitory neurotransmitter and it can reduce the effects of excessive glutamate and hence calm oneself from anxiety, depression, or even uh, irritability itself. So there are a variety of different types of neural transmitters listed here. And these are just a few of them that affect us, especially when we're dealing with depression or in itself anxiety. Now, medications can help balance neural transmitters that are out of whack. Various medications can increase or reduce neural transmitters based upon the need of the particular individual. An agonist increases the action of a neural transmitter while an antagonist inhibits the action itself.
In regards to treating depression, one of the most used types of medications is an SSRI. It's a serotonin selective reuptake inhibitor. And SSRI medications increase serotonin levels by blocking the reabsorption of it from one neuron to the next. And again, these medications treat depression, but they can also treat OCD as well as anxiety. Most cases of anxiety, though, are treated with a type of medication known as benzodiazepines. And benzodiazepines, such as Xanax or Ativan, increase GABA, as we spoke about in the previous slide, to help reduce anxiety. It's important to note, though, that these are all controlled substances that uh, affect neurotransmitter production, but they also can have side effects. And this is why they're controlled, because they can have highly addictive qualities if misused, especially in cases with Xanax. So it's important to work with doctors and what doses are needed. And in particular, if one chooses also later to get off of this particular medication, because there can be withdrawal symptoms. So anytime you're dealing with an SSRI type medication, it's a gradual increase and it takes a little while for the effects to take place. And while using it, it can be very beneficial, but there can be side effects. So sometimes when working with a psychiatrist or a primary physician that has the ability to guide you in mental health, then you would uh, look for particular medications uh, that might work better for you. It's also important to note for those who are in more of a holistic mindset that when using particular herbs that might increase or decrease serotonin, it's important not to mix those with pharmaceutical drugs because it can cause serious damage to yourself, especially if you're already on a SSRI and uh, you are on an herb that has the same effects, it can cause too much, which can be toxic for the system. So whenever you are dealing with herbs and looking at their effects, especially when it comes to neurotransmitters and serotonin levels, or in terms of uh, dealing with depression or anxiety, it, you should not play doctor, but you should consult with a professional to see how those herbs interact with what you might be using so that you don't end up harming yourself with worse side effects. So that's just a little bit on neurotransmitters, their role in mental health, especially with grief and depression. Uh, we here offer a grief counseling certification from the American Academy of Grief Counseling. Below is our link. Our number is 330-652-7776. And our email is info at AIHCP.org. I'd like to thank you for listening and have a good day.